Hi there, in this video I'm going to be taking you through Recordbox 6. Now Recordbox 6 is the latest iteration of Pioneer's DJ program and it has been one of the leading DJ programs around the world for quite a few years. The newest version, Recordbox 6, has brought along with it a bunch of new features that people have been wanting for years now, and I'm going to dive deep into each and every one of them. If you're here for a specific topic, I'll have timestamps in the description below so you can jump directly to the feature you're interested in. So let's get right into it. Now, once you've installed the program and you open it up, I would recommend that if you were on a previous version of Recordbox, such as Recordbox 5, you go through the process of importing your Recordbox 5 library to Recordbox 6. Recordbox 6 will give you an option to do this as soon as you open up the program for the first time, as long as you've got the previous version of Recordbox already installed. Now, once you either import your own music or you bring in your library from Recordbox 5, I recommend you go ahead and analyze all of your tracks. So you would jump to your collection, you would highlight all of the tracks. You can do this by pressing Command A on a Mac or Control A on a Windows uh, computer, and you would right click and select Analyze Tracks. Now, if you're analyzing tracks for the very first time, as in you haven't used the previous version of Recordbox before, you would have to make sure all three of these are ticked and just press OK and analyze them. If you're analyzing tracks that you've brought over from Recordbox 5, all you need to do is right click and select Add New Analysis Data. Now for me it's grayed out because I've already done this, but this will give you the new analysis data that Recordbox 6 has implemented. Now, once you've implemented this new analysis data, I would recommend highly that you go into the Preferences tab, into the View section, and you scroll down until you find the Waveform Color. And I would change the Waveform Color to a three-band color display. The reason for this is because Recordbox 6 has implemented this brand new three-color waveform display and the three colors being blue, orange, and white. I believe they might call it yellow on the website, but to me it looks very orange. So blue means, represents rather, low frequencies. In other words, bass. Yellow or orange represents mid-range frequencies. So vocals, keyboards, guitars, synthesizers, even bass, but the higher frequency of bass. And then white represents the high frequencies, percussive instruments, noise, things like this. So it can really help tell you what's going on throughout the entire track. Now, of course, the amplitude is also represented by the height of the wave. So sort of the higher the blue section is, the louder the bass is. So in this track over here, which is made by a good friend of mine called Alex Soren, you can clearly see that the blue section of the wave here is louder, as well as the other ones, than the blue section of the wave here. This is a clear indicator that this section of the track is a break and this section of a track is a drop. This makes a significant difference to your mixing because by being able to see what's going on where in the track, it can help you mix at the right moments. Now on to the next feature. With the brand new record box, you no longer need to pay a subscription in order to use performance mode of the program. Now in all previous versions of record box, you had two modes, export mode, which you could only use to prepare your tracks for performance with CDJs in the sense that you couldn't plug in a controller and DJ using export mode. For that, you would need performance mode, which was a paid feature. Now, if you had bought a controller that uses Recordbox, you likely got a free license key to use with it. So it would come with a license key, which you would input into Recordbox and you would have access to the full program for life. Now with Recordbox 6, that's no longer the case. 
as soon as you plug in a DJ controller which is compatible with Recordbox 6, it identifies it and it allows you to use performance mode for free. So no longer needing to find your license keys or transferring ownership of them if you're buying secondhand and so on. The downside of this is that you don't get all of the features for free if you're not paying for the program. So that means that they have implemented some payment plans where if you want all of the features, whether you've bought a Recordbox compatible controller or not, you're going to need to pay a monthly subscription. Now, it's not that bad because it's not too expensive, but if I navigate over to the My Page section, which you see over here, then if I go to Plan, you can see the various different plans. Now, I've already activated my plan, so it's not actually showing me the plans available, but if I click on these three little dots and I go to Change or Cancel Your Plan, I can go and it will navigate me to the website where it will show me what available plans there currently are. So we can see the plans over here with the free plan where we're not paying a monthly subscription, nor do we have a controller plugged in. We get both export and performance mode, but export mode is the one you're likely to use to manage your music, set your memory cues, your hot cues, create your playlists and export them into a USB stick to perform with CDJs. However, when you plug in a hardware controller that is Recordbox compatible, then you unlock the DJ with controller features. If I hover over the little eye, it's going to tell us you can control some of the DJ features with DJ hardware connected to your computer. Now, what you can't control is all of them. So of course, without paying for the most expensive subscription, we no longer have access to RMX effects. So all of the nice echoes and delays and all those kinds of effects, we won't be able to utilize them unless we're paying for the most expensive subscription. And there's a few other features. I recommend you go ahead and you look through this and you decide whether it's something that's useful to you or not. I believe personally for most people, you're gonna be absolutely fine with, with the free hardware unlock version, unless you want specifically a couple of features that you may find useful. Now, for me, I went for the creative plan, which currently is, $9.99 per month. Now it says this offer is available until July 13th, but if you do pay for it before July 13th, you're going to be paying $9.99 for life, which is great. So you're going to be saving a whole five pounds every single month. If you know you want to get this, this plan, it's worth getting it before July 13th. Same thing with the core plan. You'll be saving three pounds if you get it before July 13th. Now, it also gives you a great overview here of what you're going to be missing. So, of course, if you want to use DVS mode, so you have turntables and you want to use a digital vinyl system, you're going to have to pay for this plan. And if you want to use cloud library sync, as well as a few other features, you're going to have to pay for the more expensive plan. We're going to get into all of those features throughout the rest of the video as well. So I went for the creative plan specifically because of cloud library sync. For me, this is one of the most incredible features of the new version of Recordbox. Imagine in the past, you've got your library synced to your laptop and touch wood, something happens to your laptop, it breaks, you lose it, something along those lines, which of course you never wish it happens to you, but it can happen to everybody. It actually has happened to me in the past where one of my laptops got stolen and I had a bunch of my tracks and a bunch of my um, projects, project files in there. And this was not a pleasant experience. So having had this feature then would have been a lifesaver. What it allows you to do is save your entire record box library, including all of the track information. So any hot cues, memory cues, track analysis, playlist creation that you've done, it saves it all on the cloud. So whenever you go into a new computer, you can simply log into your account and it will download all of the tracks plus all of the data for those tracks, such as the playlist information, the um, hot cues, memory cues, any information, all of the metadata, 
into Rekordbox automatically and you don't have to worry about a thing. Now, of course, in order for you to have this feature, you need to be aware of two things. One, you need to be paying for the most expensive version of the Rekordbox subscription. Two, you need to be paying for a Dropbox subscription. See, the way it works is it gets you to link your record box to your Dropbox account. It doesn't work with any other online cloud service such as iCloud or Google Drive or OneDrive. It doesn't work with any of them, only with Dropbox. So the way it works is you need to go to the My Page section and to Library Sync. Now I'm just going to turn, I've already turned mine on, but I'm going to turn it off so I can show you what the process would be like. Once you have activated the plan, if you're paying for the most expensive one, you go to Library Sync and you activate Library Sync. You select Merge, you basically accept the conditions, it gives you a little tutorial. I'll go through them anyway, but feel free to read these little additional steps that it tells you. And then we close. Now, what you would do is either on your playlists or on your entire collection, you would select Cloud Library Sync. So I've already done this. So if I right click on a track, you would go to Cloud Library Sync, you'd hover over Upload, and you would select one of the options. I'll run you through them. I'm just going to unsync this track, and then I'll go through syncing it again so you can see what options you get. So right click, Cloud Library Sync, Upload, Dropbox. Now, you would get Move or Copy. Move will take all of your track files from wherever they're currently stored on your computer or on your external hard drive and move them to a Dropbox folder in your computer. This is the ideal scenario because you would not have duplicates of those files. See, if you press copy, you would be creating duplicates of those files in your Dropbox folder. What this means is that if those files are already stored on your laptop or computer, they would now exist in two different places on your computer, therefore taking up twice the storage. Now, if they're stored in an external hard drive, feel free to copy because your external hard drive doesn't take up space in your physical computer. For me, because I've got all my files stored on my laptop internally, I'm going to push move. Now, I forgot to mention one more step, which is the fact that you're going to have to actually download Dropbox, which you can do via the internet, install it on your computer. And what will happen is a folder will be created in your computer. I've actually linked to mine over here. And what Recordbox has done when I selected Cloud Sync, it automatically created a folder named Recordbox here with all of the track files inside this folder. And it does this automatically. So just so that you're aware, this is what's actually going to happen. Now, couple more things to note about this. On all of your tracks, there is now a cloud icon on the left. When they're synced to, Dro to Dropbox, the cloud is a fully filled highlighted cloud. But when they're not synced to Dropbox, as in when they're not saved in the cloud, you see that the cloud has a little uh, line across it and it's hollow inside. So just keep that in mind. That's a good way to know whether your track has been synced or not synced. And in terms of the data of your tracks, so if I put this track on a deck and I add in a couple of hot cues, for example, that information will be synced separately on Recordbox's cloud. And what Recordbox does is it kind of pulls those two pieces of information, the tracks from Dropbox and the tracks from Recordbox's cloud together and inserts them into your new device. Now, the Recordbox information, so now that I've inserted these two hot cues, Recordbox will automatically upload this data every 10 minutes. But let's say I want to close this program down now and I don't give it time to upload that data. You can push here on the record box icon, sync now, and it will sync them the moment that you push that button. So let's say you have a desktop computer at home. You do 
all of your playlist organization right there and then and then you simply go away with a laptop and you want to have that information show up on your laptop straight away you push sync now and then you go onto your laptop you open up record box and it will synchronize and download all of that new data you may have added you may have created a brand new playlist you want that to synchronize that's the process that you would go through so again just another important thing to note if you're using cloud sync the next feature that i want to talk about is to do with relocating your tracks now what is this feature first of all well if you ever had any missing files, meaning that you would try to load a track onto a deck and it would say, sorry, load error, the file could not be found. And there would be a little exclamation mark on the left of the file as well. This would mean that Rekordbox would not be able to locate the audio file. There could be a number of reasons for this. You may have accidentally moved the folder where the file is located or the file outside of the folder. You may have accidentally deleted the file. You know, it could be a number of reasons. Now, in the past, if this happened and you had accidentally moved the file somewhere else, you would have to manually go and tell Rekordbox where it is. So you'd either right click and press relocate. And then what that would do is open up a file explorer and you would have to go in and locate the file. Alternatively, if you had multiple missing files, you could go to File, Display All Missing Files, and all of your missing files would pop up here. Now, the new feature that I want to talk about is Auto Relocate. This is the first time Recordbox have implemented this feature, and it is absolutely incredible. Someone like me has been waiting for it for a long time. For the past few years, as I've been teaching DJing, I've been telling all of my students, be extremely careful with where you store your files because if you move them by accident, it's going to be really difficult to relocate them all. So with auto relocate, you can press this and Recordbox will automatically search through certain file locations to try and find the files. And you see that it found the file and now I can drag and drop it into I'm just going to press allow just because it found the file on my desktop and on Mac, you have to press allow on everything. And it found the file and now I can load it back into my decks. Now, in order for this feature to work, you need to open up the preferences, go to the advanced tab and you see where it says auto relocate search folders. By default, it's going to search your music folders, movies folders, desktop, and if you wanted to search any other folders, you need to select add, locate it to which folder you want it to search through. So for example, I might click my documents, press OK or open rather, and now it will also search through my documents folder. Of course, I can add more. So I'll also go for my Dropbox folder, press open, and now it will search through my documents and my Dropbox folder as well. So before you use the auto relocate feature, I recommend going and adding all of the files you think the track might possibly be located on. It may be your downloads folder even. So you could go ahead, click add, select your downloads folder and press open. And then you auto relocate and that would work just fine. Now we're gonna take a deep dive into the brand new Recordbox app for iOS. Now, of course, you can only use this on iPhone, so hoping it comes to Android users in the future, but for now, it's iPhones only. Now, this app is a great companion to Recordbox on your computer because it allows you to edit playlists, edit memory cues, hot cues, grid analysis information, and even download more tracks into your library all while on the move using your iPhone. And we're gonna take a look at all of those features and how you can use them to better your DJ sets. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So the first thing you should do when you download and install the app is sign into your account and cloud sync so you can have all of your record box data synced into the app automatically. And we're gonna look at that right now. So I'm gonna click on the little preferences icon at the top right, login, and then enter my account credentials. 
Now, if we want to use the cloud library sync function, the next step will be to go back into the preferences, click on the account name and select activate. Once the account has been activated, in order to enable the cloud library sync function, you need to also enable cloud library sync on the preferences. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Once you've done that, a little percentage icon is going to show up to tell you how much of your entire library has been synced to your mobile device. Right now it's telling me that it's 1% synced. So it's going to take a little bit of time because my library is so large. And after this is finished, I'll be able to view all of my tracks and all of my record box data directly on the mobile app. When I go to collection, I would be able to see them here. As you can see, there's already some of the tracks that I've synced. Of course, they haven't actually downloaded onto my phone. If you want to download them onto your mobile device, then you have to click on the three dots at the top right, tick on the tracks that you want downloaded, and simply click on the download icon on the left of the pop-up icons. That will then download the tracks onto your device. Now, if I also go back and I click on playlists, you can see that my playlists have actually synced as well. Now I'm going to show you how you can actually edit your track information using your iPhone. So this meaning your memory cues, hot cues, any grid adjustments that you need to make, as well as creating new playlists directly from your mobile device. So if I click on Collapse Jam, for example, and then I simply swipe up from the bottom, it brings up the edit section of Recordbox on the mobile device. Now I can create cue points and then I can create memory cues by swiping to the left or hot cues by swiping to the right. It's extremely clever. I could click on the little overview of the waveform, navigate wherever I want, and then refine the position by clicking on the zoomed in part of the wave and then click where the main grayed out cue point is in the middle, swipe right and there's a hot cue created, swipe left and there's a memory cue created. Now, of course, you can also create looped hot cues or hot loops, as well as looped memory cues. So the way you do this is by simply creating a loop first. So I'm just going to tap on loop to take me to the auto loop section, press where it says four, and that will give me a one bar loop also known as four beats. And I'm just pinching out on the waveform with two fingers so I, so I can show you the entire loop length here. Then I'm going to swipe right. And here we've got our hot cue with the loop set. Now it's amazing because I could either go to my memory cues or to my hot cues and actually see them all and even delete some if I want to just like this. Now I can also go to my memory cues and navigate from memory queue to memory queue and even set new ones manually just by going to where I want the memory queue to be set, queue in the track and pressing memory. Of course, I could delete them as well. I can navigate to any of the ones that I've set and simply push the cross button. And you've also got a list where you'd be able to see all of your memory queues in the list. So let me just create a new one, go to the list, and there we go, there is my memory queue. I can also click on these three little dots, add a comment for the memory queue, color it if you want to, and even turn it into an active loop. Now, let me just quickly show you what that means. Let's say I've set a memory queue around here, and that memory queue is a looped memory queue, like this. Now you can see this memory queue, the second one has a loop icon attached to it. I can click the three little dots, turn it into an active loop, like so. And now whenever I play the track from before that memory queue, so if I go, as a matter of fact, back to the first memory queue and I press play, as soon as it gets to that second memory queue, it will automatically begin looping. Super, super cool. Now, finally, you can also adjust the grid of a track. So if some of the tracks have been analyzed incorrectly, you've got all of the buttons you would find in normal full version of Recordbox. So I could change where the downbeat is with the main button in the middle with the line that's half red, half white, like so. I'm going to undo that because it's been analyzed correctly. You can also shift the entire grid to the right. 
or to the left. Again, I'm going to undo that just because the track has been analyzed correctly. You can adjust the grid of a track from a certain point onwards by using the buttons at the bottom right, like so. So say the first bar had been analyzed correctly, but the second bar hadn't. I can, on the second bar, push the bottom right button and it will change the grid lines of the second bar. But when we go back to the main, it's kept the first bar's grid lines correct as they were, and the second bars onwards, it's moved them. Of course, this track doesn't need this treatment, but it's good to know that it's there in case you're working with some tracks which were potentially recorded with real musicians and the timing wasn't perfect on every single bar. Of course, you can half and double the tempo and you can also expand or compress the grid lines. Now, if you've completely mucked up the grid adjustment by accident and you don't want to go through manually fixing it, then you can go back to main. You can select to drop down the full view, swipe left on the track and simply select analyze track and it will re-analyze the track so that you get the grid adjustment so that the grid resets to what it was originally. Of course, you can bulk analyze tracks as well. So if you insert a bunch of new tracks into Recordbox, it will analyze them automatically. But just in case it doesn't, you need to click on all of the tracks, push this button, and it will go through analyzing all of the tracks. Fantastic. Now, you also have a little mixer, which allows you to sync two tracks and test how they sound together. So I'm going to go to my Captain Records playlist as they have kindly given me access to use their tracks copyright free for our tutorial videos. And I'm just going to quickly download a bunch of the tracks. So now that a couple of tracks have downloaded, I'll open up the mixer. I'll go to B. I'm going to click where the track is and it will allow me to load a new track on that deck. I'll go with Visions of Love. Then I'll go to deck A click where the track is, load another track on deck A, and then push A and B. And now this is also giving me a little tutorial for what you can do within this view of Recordbox. So let me run you through the options. Most of them should be self-explanatory if you're already a DJ. So of course we've got sync, and I would advise that you use sync for when you're practicing your mixes on your mobile phone, just because you don't have decks, very difficult to beat match. So turn sync on. Now I can play one of the tracks. Of course, I'm gonna queue up the second track at the beginning of the track, and I'm simply gonna press play. It synchronizes them. Now, if I wanna make any adjustments, if I push the button in the middle, then anything I do, it will do to both tracks at the same time. So I could jump by eight bars, come back by eight bars, change what this is. I could go to the next memory queue, to the previous one. I don't actually have any memory queues set on this track, on these tracks. That's why it's not taking me there. But you've got a few bulk options. So it's just a great way to test what your tracks sound like together and potentially create a playlist out of them. Of course, you also have a crossfader to help you crossfade from one to the other. So I'll cue both tracks now, and let's say I wanted to create a new playlist. All I have to do is go back to this view, click on the little button to the right of the search bar, and then select the tracks I want in a playlist. Click on the drop down menu and either select an existing playlist or push create new playlist. So I'll create a new playlist and I'll call this iOS record box. Press OK, and there you go. That will now be automatically cloud synced to Recordbox on my laptop. Now, one final thing I want to mention is that as of the newest version of Recordbox, you can theoretically connect your mobile device to a compatible CDJ player and play off your mobile device. So that means you no longer need a USB stick. Now, I wouldn't really recommend you do this yet because it's quite a new system. So there's no guarantee that it will work perfectly. But even if it does, you need a whole bunch of adapters in order for that to work. So I'm going to put a picture of some of the adapters that you need on the video. But 
I would recommend you just stick to using a USB stick for the time being. But it's great to know the feature is there and they're thinking about the future of DJing. So that's it for my Recordbox 6 tutorial. I hope you've learned something and can go and apply it yourself. Recordbox 6 is an extremely good program. Of course, there are others, but if you're a touring DJ who plans on going and performing in a lot of venues or clubs, most of the time you're gonna find Pioneer CDJs in those venues. So being able to rock up with a USB stick with all of your tracks analyzed and all of your playlists already made is a really big help. This is the main reason I would recommend you use Recordbox, whether you like the program or not. And of course, for that purpose, Recordbox is completely free to use. So please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you find it useful. And I also want to let you know that we're offering one-to-one -one DJ and music production courses remotely. So you can learn with either myself or any of the other Soundflow Music Academy tutors from anywhere around the world. The link to the website is in the description below, soundflowmusicacademy.com. Stay safe and I'll catch you in the next video.